Um, thank you, man of God. We are grateful. Um, so at this point, we are all received and we are all greeted. Uh, the first part, we also want uh, in this first part to appreciate all those that have joined us on Zoom uh, for this first part, and then and uh, those that have joined us on Facebook for this first part as well. And then uh, we will then go into the second part after that. So God richly bless you, um, all of you uh, servants, uh, servants of God all over where you are. Um, allow me to uh, move forward and just share. Um, we just want to share some very uh, some important. Uh, uh, you know, points. right? Um, we are at this point. Uh, building, uh, building our. our expectation uh, we are sort of interpreting the meanings of some of the things that we are talking and how they uh, play themselves particularly and uh, in a practical way now let me give a few earthly examples. Um, the present day United States that we know and we are Uh, Bishop Felicia, it looks like Apostle, the system has kicked Apostle out. Oh, thank you, Pastor Nyaras. Thank you, man of God. I'm going to kindly request Dr. Jackson to pray for us in the meantime. Thank you. Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to be in your presence and to continue in what you're doing. Holy Spirit, have your way in our midst. And whatever the technicalities are going on, Lord, we just believe that you will rect rectify them, you'll make it right. And Lord, we're here. We're sitting at your feet and we're here to be transformed, renewed, restored, reconditioned that we might be the caretakers of your divine destiny, each one of us. Lord, as you're revealing your plan and your, and your pattern, your blueprint, we're just open and ready for your spirit to transform us and renew us so that we might see, understand, perceive, and here in fullness, what you're saying. Father, it's gonna take you enlarging our hearts 
expanding our minds and bringing us back to the truth that we understand that things have been diluted. Some things have been misrepresented. The enemy has tried to thwart this, but Lord, your word prevails. And so this return as apostle Lord, we just believe hear what, what's being shared and what's being said. Lord, your plans will not be thwarted. This will go forth. And whatever we need to do, make it happen. Lord, we depend on you. You're our source, you're our supply. And through you, we will have peace, knowing that you will make all things right. So we just thank you, Lord as we continue to just worship you until the technicalities of this situation are resolved, the man of God be released to speak forth as your oracle. Hallelujah. We just thank you, Lord. We just thank you, Lord. As the man of God is returning, we give you the praise and glory for it in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the prayers. Okay, um, so the, the nations that we see today, the good things that you see in them, uh, it is because they, they, were, um, they, were, they were custodians who carried responsibilities uh, to to bring that about and the nations that we see today also that are loaded with evil uh, the that evil was brought and was built by uh, some custodians of evil in those nations and in those places so nothing happened on its own and by itself um, so we are at a point which I can liken to what we described before. Uh, it can be identified with Jeremiah 29. It can be identified with Ezra chapter 1. It can be identified with so many other places if we are giving biblical examples. But I can basically say we are in a post-war kind of a season, although there, there is yet another phase of another war that is also uh, building up and uh, it, is, uh, it is in the midst of happening. But we have generally come to the tail end of um, another worldwide war. In fact, it is not correct uh, for people to talk about the Ukraine war as uh, World War Three. Uh, it's actually World War Four because COVID was not just a pandemic, it was a world war. Um, the wars of today, what we have to wake up to, the reality is that uh, we have to wake up to is that the wars of today, they are now biological, they are now uh, cyber, they are now technological, and uh, before they are military. The military ones, there are very few, and the military ones, uh, some of them are only done as a last resort. But there are so many other battles that are being fought and people are fighting those battles without knowing that they are fighting intentional uh, battles and intentional wars. So 
um, but there is a cycle that happens after after a, a war uh, is fought. The the cycle is that there are persons and there are entities and there are groupings that rise and then there are those that fall. Uh, there are those that uh, fade away into oblivion. Um, so for example, today, the two superpowers that were like dominant, especially during the Soviet Union and the United States you know, era, those two superpowers, their present form, uh, it only emerged after the Second World War. And uh, then, but there are some powers that became weaker also after that Second World War. Same applies with First World War. Before the First World War was, uh, Japan was a global power, not in terms of uh, technology, but it was a global military power. You may need to know that uh, at one time, China was nearly colonized by Japan. And at one time, you need to know that uh, Japan uh, actually uh, wanted to conquer the world. It wanted to just create a Japanese empire in the whole world. Uh, Japan wanted to, co to colonize even the United States. So, um, uh, and uh, the thing that led to the nuclear holocaust of uh, uh, Nagasaki and uh, Hiroshima Islands, it was because it was a world war and there was contestation for dominion. There was contestation for influence uh, in the whole world, right? So when that now ended, um, balances of power shifted and so forth. Now, post or after the Second World War, um, First of all, during that Second World War itself, which was uh, Hitler, the Nazi Germany, uh, and the uh, rest of the world, but the rest of the world mostly uh, led by the Allied uh, forces and so forth, with the, uh, the, the, the communists on the other side opposing Germany and also the Allied uh, alliances on the other side also opposing Nazi Germany. And during that Second World War, uh, America, although it was not militarily attacked um, in that war, um, but uh, something was happening in the backyard of America in terms of industrialization, especially the building up of the industrial and military uh, might was happening while the, the, the war was happening on the other side and American industries became major suppliers of uh, military hardware and uh, technological uh, hardware to the, uh, to the, to the combatants uh, and the, the combatant armies uh, in, in, uh, in that war. And by the time that war ended, America, um, their revenue had, had you know, the revenue had shot up very, very seriously uh, to the extent that America was then able, um, through Secretary of State uh, George C. Marshall, America was then able to draw up a European economic recovery plan, which became known as the Marshall Plan, uh, named after uh, Secretary of State George C. Marshall. And America was able to channel uh, back then uh, about 25 uh, billion US dollars into redefining as well as reconstructing Western Europe. The current European Union uh, uh, was actually born out of the post war reconstruction and it was defined principally by how the balance of power stood after that war. Uh, and then the communist bloc, Eastern Europe, 
uh, went on the other side and then Western Europe went on the other side, right? But basically, um, uh, times of war and times of reconstruction after the war, these are times that uh, I think the present day generation needs a lot of uh, education and teaching um, because we, 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 are, we, are, we are operating um, in a generation which has been mostly uh, entertained you know, in, in uh, movies and the theaters and, uh, um, and uh, uh, WhatsApp groups uh, and so forth. So there are so many things that schools don't teach uh, and also media doesn't teach uh, systematically. Actually, media today, most of it, uh, it is it is an extortionist media um, which makes people to pay for it, but without uh, providing information and without providing uh, authentic data which can help humanity in times of reconstruction like now. So uh, we have to have deliberately uh, some efforts. We, we need to undertake deliberate efforts to bridge the gap, build the bridges and uh, restore paths to dwell in um, so that people of our day do not miss their time. So the post-war um, United States uh, went into a period of very unusual or unprecedented economic prosperity for many white Americans, uh, for many white Americans, and it coincided with the black Americans intensifying the struggle for civil rights and economic justice. That helps you to understand why the biggest beneficiaries were white Americans. It was because um, there was still very much of official racism and racial discrimination. So the white Americans were already like steps ahead. And so they were already positioned. So the issue of positioning is very, very important when war is fought, but also after the war, when it becomes reconstruction time. So the white Americans were well positioned the African uh, Americans or Blacks in America, um, they had to then um, rise a notch higher uh, to position themselves for issues like civil liberties um, and the right to vote and uh, several other you know, basic rights that they had not been accorded before. So they started entering into, into, into that space of uh, uh, civil liberties. Now, um, when you look at it, you then find that there are lessons that we must learn. Uh, there are you know, a summary of changes that happened in the US uh, society. We, we can talk about the Soviet Union, we can talk about China, we can talk about Africa after the Second World War, but we are just picking one example so that we can understand uh, some of the things that the scripture is trying to say today when Jeremiah is writing letters and when Obadiah, you know, the prophets are prophesying to the people of today in the hour of reconstruction and uh, Isaiah is laboring uh, to position the laboring to position uh, the righteous, because if the righteous are not positioned, I'm telling you, we are going to have evil uh, with all its relatives in a very, very big way uh, in, the, in the decades uh, and times to come. So then we find some uh, key points that started to emerge. Following the World War II, the United States emerged as one of the two dominant superpowers, turning away from its traditional isolationism and toward increased international involvement. 
uh, you need to realize that United States prior to World War II, uh, it was uh, just behaving like uh, a normal country. It wasn't behaving like a superpower. That is why the United States prior to World War II, the United States uh, actually did not colonize any country at all. That's why the United States has got a day, uh, Ju July, July 4. It's uh, the day of American independence. So they also had to you know, proclaim their own independence from Britain and things like that. The uh, United States was not, uh, although the US ambassador attended the 1844 Berlin conference in Germany, where the partitioning of Africa was carried out. But the United States was the only power or country that attended as an observer. They didn't attend as a, an imperial, uh, colonial, and colonizing power. So they didn't come into Africa uh, to parcel out land or to parcel out countries to themselves. They were, they were observers. Um, at the Berlin conference, 13 European powers were around the table, uh, subdividing and parceling Africa and so forth. Uh, but the, the global expansion of the USA only started after the Second World War. Um, part of it was coming from the lessons that they had learned during the two wars, First World War and the Second World War. So they learned some lessons uh, and so forth. In fact, without understanding this history, you won't understand the behavior of Joe Biden, the president of the USA, and you won't understand the behavior of uh, Vladimir Putin, the president of uh, Russia today. You won't understand the behavior of uh, uh, global militaries, uh, why they behave in the, same, in the way that they behave. Why don't I just sit at home and let everybody run their affairs where they are and so on? Um, lessons learned from the past uh, have taught them to say, while well, at least you are asleep and while well, at least you are uh, just uh, taking care of your wife and your kids uh, and you think the whole world is okay, not everybody is thinking like you are thinking. There are others that are thinking of uh, uh, arresting you, and there are others that are thinking of uh, uh, owning you, uh, like chattel, like property, like, like assets. So uh, you then find that the psychology of um, some of these um, you know, powers, like you are going to see in this history a little bit, um, how the, the, the whole issue of missiles and the whole issue of uh, space technologies and seeking to control not just the earth, but seeking to control even the universe, uh, the, the arms race, you know, how did these things come into being? These things came into being, as you see, uh, when people learned lessons from Hitler, uh, Hitler and uh, Nazi Germany, and uh, they learned lessons from Imperial, uh, you know, Japan uh, under Emperor Hirohito. Then they learned lessons, you know, to say, oh, by the way, don't think, don't underestimate a small country like Japan, an island country. Um, if you don't check on what they are doing, if you don't check on what they are building and what they are thinking, um, any time, uh, they can just knock on your doors and tell you to pack your uh, uh, to pack your house into into their bag, and you you'll have no future, and so forth. So um, the, those experiences they sort of drove certain nations into positioning themselves globally and positioning themselves for global influence. You will be surprised today that if you go to Countries, for example, like a Federal Republic of Nigeria, um, Nigeria, which has got a number of um, uh, states, um, it's divided into states just like USA. So there are, and almost like India as well, it's, it's, it's federal. So it's divided into states rather than just provinces. 
So the different states of Nigeria, and there are many, many of these states uh, of Nigeria, uh, over, over 30. Now, these states with the governors, state governors, USA, apart from its embassy of um, the USA in the um, Federal Republic of Nigeria, it then begins to also have smaller missions, US um, um, missions in the, in the different small states there. They want to know what you are doing there. They want to know uh, who is emerging there. They want to know what kind of politics you are doing there. They, they are everywhere, you know, really everywhere. In fact, in Africa, um, um, there's always frequently a clash between US embassies and African governments because there's so much confusion about why are you talking about this? Why are you, um, you know, because the US embassy want to know about your elections, they want to know about your candidates, they want to know about uh, um, your, your budget and your, your, your policy on HIV and on AIDS and your curriculum of the schools and, and so forth and so on. Um, there is a sleeplessness, you know, really that happens out there. Now, without understanding history, um, without understanding history, now, we, I may not, or we may not, or most of us may not uh, agree with the, the implementation of uh, the experiences that they've learned and the manifestation of, of those experiences. But um, history has taught us and history teaches humanity, including biblical history, teaches humanity to say, you can't just afford to be ignorant. You can't just afford to be uh, not interested in what is happening around you as well as far away from you because some of the challenges that can destroy your destiny and the destinies of nations, they are manufactured far away from you, far away from you. I'll give you an example. In the book of Job uh, chapter one, the sons of Job, because they were family, they were, they were sons and daughters of a very rich uh, family uh, and father. So there was feasting every day and they, they were so excited about uh, tourism and holidays and holiday making, but they didn't realize that uh, far away from them, far away from their border, there is somebody who is so jealousy and uh, you know, storms are building up against their family and against their very destiny as a household. Storms were building up against their wealth and against the, the way that God had blessed them. Let me say this to the church and to uh, people um, across the world, but especially um, uh, the people uh, that are not interested in uh, what is happening now? I want to say uh, the 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 plans that are there for you, whether they are by you or they are by God, um, they also produce counter plans from another angle. So that means every plan must also have uh, its strategy. It every plan needs another plan. Uh, to fortify it and another plan to uh, uh, both defend as well as uh, um, advance it. So that's why you find the construction and the construct and the design of all militaries and all security agencies, uh, armed forces all over the world. They always have uh, elements that deal with the defense. Then they've got elements that deal with the, with offense. They deal with security, they deal with defense, they deal with uh, um, making sure that they are safe, but also making sure that they are developing and they are prospering. So um, the church can't afford to be uh, disinterested and uninterested. Uh, it was in 2015, I was speaking in a region, it's called the VAR region. Uh, of uh, South Africa, 
I can't remember, uh, 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 I don't know whether uh, uh, Prophetess uh, Rachel Squane uh, is in the meeting tonight. Um, she was the host of uh, a beginning of the year prayer conference and I was the uh, guest speaker. And I called for prayer. Uh, apart from speaking in the conference, I, I made a prayer request. I said, uh, let's pray because I'm talking of January 2015. And I said, God has shown me something and is troubling me. And God has shown me that um, we need, I'm talking about the body of Christ. I said, we need to uh, prepare to function at a level that is more strategic and uh, uh, more efficient than the United Nations because there are conspiracies that are brewing and they are building up against, against the church and against the righteous. And these conspiracies are global. And uh, we are headed towards a time whereby God has shown me that even churches that you think they are very strong, even pastors that uh, you think, ah, these are our men of God and, and so on, all those things, will come to nothing. All those churches will shut down and all those pastors will not save anybody. They will not save anybody. They will not protect anybody. All the strengths. And I said, there are pastors that today, if you call them to, even to a meeting of uh, church fathers in the nation or in the city, they don't come because they don't think that they need anybody. They think that they are okay by themselves. I said, they will be, destroyed, they will come to nothing. Some of them will be buried and some of them will never see them again. And I made a prayer appeal and I said, let's pray that uh, the church will be able to birth strategic institutions that will, de will defend the, the, the mandate of the, of the Great Commission. The church will need to be not just a defender of the Great Commission, but also a defender of God's purposes and the destiny of nations. Because I, I have seen God has shown me uh, this conspiracy um, and it's building up. And uh, this conspiracy will even desire, it will even attempt to wipe out even the preaching of the gospel. And I put out the prayer request, it was in the VAR, region in January 2015. Now that was the time that the Lord spoke to me uh, very clearly um, um, to say this thing that I am showing you five years, just there is five years ahead of you. And uh, these five years, um, you have been given grace, maximum grace uh, to prepare a, a response, to, re to prepare a defense. Now you need to understand where World Economic Congress comes from and uh, where World Economic Congress, um, the, 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 the mindset and the purpose and the, 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 uh, the, the mandate um, and, and the scale of ki the kind of things that um, you know, we have to deal with. The, the Lord showed me very clearly to say, I mean, all the all the guys, all the guys that think, um, yeah, no, I'm okay, and and we're okay. Uh, they are not okay. They they will not be safe. Uh, I was not surprised when I saw mega churches shutting down, mega churches collapsing, and and this and uh, mega pastors coming to naught, and uh, and everything just getting grounded. And underneath the lockdowns and uh, behind the scenes, uh, behind the shutdowns. I mean, in Africa, you see, in Africa, people, we are very, we are very naive generally because we just wake up and we, uh, we wash our bodies and uh, we bath ourselves and uh, drink uh, uh, coffee or tea. And then we, we start going uh, and until, until evening. Now, the world is not operating that way. Um, it's not operating that way. We have to be deliberate about um, the future. We have to be deliberate and to, to be intentional to say uh, how many, um, how many um, 
uh, scientists that we have in the kingdom of God. One of the areas that uh, I was looking at this uh, late afternoon was just the issue of the Josephs. Um, God spoke to us in, in, this, in this mandate about the Josephs. Um, they must come together. And I have seen ever since God spoke that, which was uh, initially 2016, November, but also more recently, November last year, and I have seen how disorganized uh, Christianity is and Christians, and I've seen pathetically how disorganized um, we are um, in, in terms of inability to think strategically um, and uh, sometimes failing to learn from lessons. Uh, the lessons that we have seen just in the two years of COVID, they should have, and they indeed still teach us to say, um, we are not that uh, secure and we are not that safe. And uh, after preaching the word of God, we sort of need some few more steps forward in terms of preparing, in terms of organizing uh, and, and getting certain things done. Now, let me uh, fast forward and just show us a few items here then we'll get into some little bit of discussion and then, then we can close in prayer. Um, I'm looking at uh, the resurrection that took place after the Second World War when the USA was now rising uh, to become um, a global power and to become uh, a present day power that it became. I said, I'm just picking on one country. I could have picked on uh, U USSR, I could have picked on uh, on Britain, I could have just picked on, on anything. In fact, Britain was more of a, an older history uh, in terms of the First World War. So the United States, um, it, it then after that war, um, they started now to be interested in uh, away from um, its traditional eh, uh, isolationism, inward looking uh, governance and politics and culture. And they started going into increased international involvement, uh, which I've just explained you know, uh, to you. That, that's why you find the United States today, if you, if you produce some brilliant boys eh, in, your, in your village, the United States, if they hear about them, they'll give them scholarships and they'll take them to America and then you'll never see them again. Um, and um, uh, they, they, they'll be given green cards, they'll become Americans, and then they'll become now the uh, brains and the intelligence of America um, in favor of uh, um, advancing their primary uh, vision and, and goals. Similarly, if you produce uh, smart innovations and inventions, uh, Africa, its brain drain is unprecedented. Uh, we lose intelligent people um, and so forth. We, we just lo we lose even preachers. Uh, I mean, we, we, we lose preachers. Um, uh, I remember very well how many times I resisted to, uh, to become based in the USA. Uh, many times because uh, the, 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 the um, increased international involvement and international appetite, it became a national brand and uh, isolationism uh, was abandoned and they now wanted to at least be involved in everything that is great. You may want to know, you may want to know actually that uh, uh, today, there is a, a, a program that actually is, runs, and I won't tell you which, which, which department that program runs, but there's a program um, which runs in the USA, a, a, a program for collecting all the best witches and sorcerers from all different parts of the world and giving them uh, you know, citizenship and uh, deploying them to use uh, sorcery and witchcrafts and their powers, um, including ultra body and ultra world uh, and ultra uh, science and technology powers in order to do anything, anything that can be done to give them access to uh, future information, fortune telling, 
uh, soothsaying and all kinds of things. They, they rely on this thing. That is why even the positioning of July 4 as uh, the day of independence, uh, it was spiritually determined to and bring together a, a merger or a merging together of all the five historical greatest civilizations of the world. All of them connect, you see, connected and becoming a masala in, 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 in one day there. Now, these are all efforts, you know, right? These are all efforts now. There are so many political implications and ideologies. One can talk about that. But if you go into the book of Jonah, you will find in the book of Jonah that the storm was raging uh, in the seas when Jonah had failed to go to Nineveh and he was going to Tashish. And the storm came and the storm was raging, the waves were raging. And at that point, Jonah was fast asleep in the deck and the rest of the inhabit you know, inhabitants and the crew they were battling to uh, fortify themselves and to survive and defend the ship and so forth and so on. Until these guys, they stopped what they were doing and they focused their concern on Jonah to say, who is this guy? We are trying every trick under the sun to survive here and to fortify ourselves. But this guy is the only guy that is fast asleep here. Who is this guy? Then they agreed to stop all what they were doing, focus on Jonah. Uh, men handled him, called him to account, demanded. They fired about five questions, uh, you know, to him before he could answer the first one. They were firing questions: uh, Who are you? Where are you going? Where are you coming from? Who are your people? And uh, what is your mission? They were asking him all these things. And then uh, eventually, when they threw him into the water, but they said to him, why do you not care? Because don't you see that we are perishing? And don't you see that everyone here has been calling on his God? But how come you fast asleep and you, I mean, don't you also have a God? And if you have a God, what is the purpose of your God? When shall your God work? if he can't work at a time when people are perishing in the ocean. Now, then they threw him, uh, you know, into the, in, into, the, into the waters. They threw him as a non-essential baggage, excess baggage uh, in the boat. Now, these are the kinds of things that you find sometimes uh, after we have done all and said all, we tend to be uh, relegated to non-essential and then we are thrown uh, anywhere where the whale or where the crocodiles can feast on us, nobody cares. Because sometimes our lack of care, our lack of custodianship and our lack of interest and our lack of uh, uh, foresight and our lack of sensitivity and our lack of uh, solutions, um, it is quite uh, worrisome. Uh, we get destroyed without caring that destruction is coming. Uh, now, God is changing uh, this kind of uh, Christianity from being the mainstream of the Christian faith because in the beginning, it was not so. The things that the world is trying to solve uh, these are things that first and foremost, in the first instance, they were committed to the righteous. And now it is only in the absence of the righteous that you now find uh, wrong people take over and uh, wrong methods take over, uh, wrong strategies take over, um, wrong uh, philosophies, wrong entrepreneurs take over because the sons of God, they are absent and they are failing to manifest and they were, they were lured and then dumped in a four-world church building and uh, they called it, now this is the fullness of their faith and of their life and they know nothing about it. Um, uh, industrial direction, they know nothing, they are not even interested uh, even to know about it what is coming against the nation, what is coming against uh, uh, the, 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 the poor, what is coming up against the youth. 
they, they don't care about influencing the future. Um, so, uh, and yet nations, they, 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 are, they are groaning and, 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 and they are struggling. Now, so from a perspective of um, ordinary people who, who are left there sometimes uh, without God, but they are seeing the challenges and they are seeing uh, death coming and they are seeing crisis coming, um, they are then left with no option except to do certain things that they do, but in a wrong, drastically wrong way, because the righteous are absent. Now, the United States, it then became a global influence in economic, eh, political, military, cultural, and technological affairs. Now, after the Second World War, because they were now saying, okay, uh, the world is not safe. Uh, the people are not safe, including ourselves, we are not safe. So, and uh, many people don't care even about being safe. So if people don't care about being safe, we are going to take over the security of the world, global security, and we are going to take over and we are going to uh, uh, be in charge ourselves because we can't trust anybody. Now, you need to understand these uh, mentalities and these, the, the, hist the historicity, the, the historical origins of some of these issues. Um, the same way with the, your, your, you know, your Soviet Union, the same way today with your China. I shared on this platform sometime last year how the Chinese Communist Party produced a 50-year agenda. It was announced. They are working on a 50-year agenda, 100-year agenda, and they are hotly pursuing it when the uh, Ukraine war broke out. Chinese uh, central leadership convened produce their strategy and they've got a strategic direction that they are pursuing to fortify themselves. They might, don't be surprised if they invade Taiwan. Don't be surprised if they, whatever. Look at uh, North Korea, look at what they're every week testing new missiles and, uh, and uh, intercontinental missiles and so forth. Now, these are occupants of the board, gentlemen and ladies, these guys are occupying the port. They are seeing the storms, but they don't know the solution. They don't know how to solve these issues. And they are wondering now, the time will then come when they start to wonder to say, everybody's concerned, but there's a group of people that is not concerned, but they are add, adding weight to the port. They are adding weight uh, to the sinking and they are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are causing this boat to sink faster. So, um, um, let's do something against them, let's persecute them, because these guys, they are not offering any solution and so forth and so on. Now, in the case of Jonah, uh, eventually, by the grace of God, uh, God's intervention took him to the correct destiny. So we are talking about destiny of nations, but at the same time, we must also be talking about the destiny uh, of the um, um, the 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 the, inf the custodians the, the custodians themselves uh, have got to be uh, you know in control and they've got to be in sync with the the bigger mission and the bigger uh, uh, direction and the bigger trajectory. One of the things that God has uh, has raised us to solve and to deal with. You need to understand that the other kinds, the other types of uh, threats that face humanity today. Like there are some threats that face uh, entire, the entire human race from a fallen education system. Now, the current structure of the church does not have a financial uh, budget eh, to, to reverse a negative um, structure of um, education. The current structure of the church in terms of its tithes, tithes offerings and, and so forth does not have a structure, does not have even room to cater for um, the you know, uh, recovery. In fact, we, the, 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 there's no budget in the church even to cater for post-COVID recovery of church members. I'm just talking of basic church members. I'm not even talking about... Uh, communities. Now, uh, and before we recover from COVID, lo and behold, uh, war starts, uh, cyber war, military war, and so on. 
and we are fast, fast behind. So under those circumstances, that's where you then find that God is going to now um, uh, unleash and commission an army of deliverers, you know, th those that must go at least wake up and come out of slumber. This is why you find even for Israel to survive, there were times when God would just take out five guys, take out seven guys, take them out of the uh, uh, you know, swimming pool and uh, take them out into the rivers there, cause them to flow and to float and to go very far and to go and to see far away while least others are still in the swimming pool, they're in the fish pond and they are circulating there, playing with the catfish and, uh, and, and uh, mackerel fish and, and so forth. Uh, but out there, there are things that are forming up. There's a drought that is coming. You are all going to die in the fish pond one by one, slowly but surely. So God used to take certain individuals out there and begin the, I mean, that's what he did with Joseph. You know, he allowed him to be out there ahead of the famine and, and then reappear, reappear as a, a deliverer in the day when broader deliverance was now needed. This was the thing that Joseph prepared for. This is something which the, the brothers could not ordinarily see. They were thinking that they are safe. In fact, they were so feeling safe that they uh, even didn't want to allow anybody to dream beyond their level of dreams. So we are dealing with a specific agency. We are dealing with a specific mandate. Uh, we are dealing with the breaking paralysis and breaking a logjam and breaking uh, stagnation and breaking a threat which threat stands not just against righteousness, it's a threat that stands against the entire order of divine creation. We are dealing with these issues, and we are dealing with the issues that Bible schools could not deal with because the, the, the way things were fashioned was such that the same thief who steals your property, he is then the same thief who leaves behind a textbook uh, for you to go and report to the police station based on the text that he has left for you to use for reporting. So you can never report the truth because you were, you were left with, with the falsified information and, 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 and that is what you are beginning to use. So the architecture that we were left with does not permit us to disciple nations. It does not permit Psalms 2 verse 8, ask of me, uh, uh, ask of me and I'll give you nations for your inheritance. The current configuration of the church, if nations are handed over to us or to one of us, we don't know what to do. It happened there in Zambia. President Chuluba became president. He was uh, whatever, born again, tongue talking, uh, church dancing and so forth. What did we do? What did church do? What did the Christian faith do? 0.0. .0 no educational solutions, no industrial solution, no economic blueprint, no educational blueprint, nothing until like Jonah, he was kicked out of the system and, and, and thrown to the cemetery and then he died. Um, we can speak on and on Malawi today, the, the president of Malawi, you know, I preached with him in, in forums, you know, he was my, you know, we were colleagues, he was, he was, he was you know, core speaker here and there, he's a pastor. Now, the day that he became a president, not just pastor, but president of the Assemblies of God of Malawi, uh, president of the Evangelical Alliance of Malawi. But when he became president, the church froze, no idea, no clue uh, about how to disciple the nation uh, and so forth. Before he was president, he used to talk, uh, he used to talk to say, God said to me, uh, because he said, I'm a pastor, I'm not, I'm not politician, I'm not president, leave me like that. And, God, uh, the, and then God said to him, if you are a pastor of um, 30,000 members of the Assemblies of God, um, and then I want to increase your, your flock to uh, uh, 15 million Malawians, uh, why do you refuse to shepherd 15 million people? Um, because you have been shepherding uh, 
so many thousands. Now you should shepherd these millions. And, and then that's how he accepted because he started discovering that to be a president primarily is to be a shepherd. It's just a shepherd of uh, uh, the, the, the flock of the whole country. And of course, in that case, you shepherd the ignorant ones, the drunkards and uh, alcoholics and uh, uh, drug addicts. And uh, you know everybody will be there. Thieves will be there. Good people will be there. Bad people will be there. If you are a powerful evangelist, then that's your time to convert them and, and, and assist them to prosper. Uh, if you are preaching prosperity, whatever, that's your time now to demonstrate what you are preaching. Now, here is the challenge. Uh, how far uh, you know, have we gone? Uh, do we have uh, blueprints uh, to share with him? Does he also look for blueprints or he's also surrounded by, or surrounded with all kinds of food? Uh, get crushers who maybe don't have ideas relating to, but sometimes it's, it's, it's the architecture of our theology, the architecture of our structures, and these are the things. Those of you, some of you will become uh, civic leaders, maybe as counselors, mayors of towns, principals of schools, uh, matrons of hospitals, superintendents of these, uh, CEOs of corporations. I believe you are feeling the same thing. Uh, I mean, the, the people are entering into things ill-prepared and ill-equipped. So this is a, a wholesale a kind of an assignment where you, we have to fix the factories of where these things uh, are made. We have to fix the wholesale system. We have to fix the distribution system and ultimately then the retail and the consumption system on the ground can be sorted out. So that's why Jesus said some of these things that you are trying to firefight and solve, you can't solve them. Seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness, and then all these other things shall be added to you. So we are fixing this crack and this collapse and this decay, whereby the kingdom functionality of the gospel was eliminated. The kingdom awareness and consciousness was totally removed. And people were left with everything else minus the kingdom. And when you lose the kingdom, uh, go and ask a, a former president, a late president Nelson Mandela, if you can find him. Go and ask a, um, the, the late retired Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Go and ask a, um, Reverend uh, um, uh, John Dube, the, 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 the founding president of the ANC, African National Congress in South Africa, the oldest liberation movement in Africa, go and ask them. They will tell you that when they started, they were not asking for a country. No, they were not asking for that. They were asking just for a right to do this, a right to do that, and then they do picketing. Um, 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 Seretse Kama, you know, he, he was not a politician. You know, he was just asking for a right to get married to a lady that he wanted to marry, a British, you know, white lady. And then all hell broke loose until he discovered that, no, 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 it's, I, I, I must escalate this thing because if I try to fight for a right to marry a girl that I want, then I'll die before I solve this thing. I better get to the root issue, the root cause is that this country is not ours. We now need this country to become normal and normalized. That's how uh, Seretse Kama then became a founding uh, you know, father. I mean, he was a, he, you know, he was a traditional chief and, and, uh, and he thought everything was fine until he realized that, no, 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 I can't solve this issue by doing this piece and that piece. Jesus speaks the same language to the disciples. He says, your food shortages, your shortages of clothing, your shortages of this and that, your firefighting. I mean, you guys are busy from January to December. Each one has got a shopping list that is trying to solve, but there is a fundamental issue. The fundamental issue is that you are colonized. The fundamental issue is that Rome and the Roman system, Persian system, Babylonians, or everybody has got their fake uh, failed systems. They are dumping on you. You don't have the kingdom of God. You were supposed to be a kingdom of priests. You're supposed to be a peculiar people. So now what you need to do is seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and everything else will get sorted. So this is, this is where we are coming from, right? 
our structures. We will go into some of these things tomorrow in the morning and tomorrow in the evenings. Our structures must usher the kingdom. Our uh, technology must usher the kingdom. Our, the way we do business and the types of business that we do must facilitate the kingdom. We have no business firefighting. Uh, firefighting has been done for years. Um, now, so this is why even politically, you then find that there are these powers. Now, why do governments establish diplomatic missions all over the world? They put ambassadors there, ambassador there, because they want to create favor and goodwill for themselves. Of course, others then go an extra mile. Those that are imperial, those that are colonialistic, they also then go further. Others, they also, others that are strategic, they make sure that their ambassadors are not just doing politics and politicking and diplomacy. They are also creating economic favor, business favor, trading favor, commercial favor, uh, technological favor for their citizens and for their countries. Because this world, everything that you see, uh, everything that you see functions from a perspective of kingdom, dominion, and influence. Nothing is just waking up and just eating porridge and then you know you wait for this and uh, uh, you, you fate and, and then you just say it shall happen according to how God, whatever God wants and the will of God, you are not interested in it. So we are escalating. I, I'm just in this session as, as, as we close, I'm, I'm just really um, laboring to, to put us into the shoes of God to put us into the creator of the universe, the creator of the earth, the creator of humanity. He says, I know the plan that I have. I have a plan. I did not just form this thing to dump it, but this thing must produce, it must emerge, it, it must manifest the kingdom. So in the end, deliver us. Uh, saviors must emerge from somewhere, from the house of God, preferably, because the righteous uh, the righteousness exalts a nation and sin is a reproach to any people. So tonight we um, fold up here. We are John. We put a comma. It's not a full stop. Uh, I'm just trying to uh, appetize us and, and introduce to us to understand that why do we don't just talk about business? Why do we also talk about economy? Why do we don't just talk about economy? Why do we also talk about reconstruction of Africa? Why do we also talk about rebuilding of uh, um, uh, a guaranteed future under God? Why do we talk about righteousness? Why don't we just talk about food and drink and, and we don't care about everything else? The future, um, can be mortgaged. The future can be set on very slippery ground if there are no saviors, if there are no deliverers, if there are no people that wake up to realize that things are not as you are being told. Even this Ukraine war that you we watch the news and so on, 90% of what you are hearing is false. And people don't know that. It's, it's actually false. You know, if, if, you, if you start to listen and to hear from some of the journalists, freelance journalists that are not controlled by any particular uh, ideological media house, they will start telling you what's happening in that war, which you will never be told. And we just sit here and we think ah, it's fine. We've got TV, we've got TV channels. Uh, there is a need for deliverers. There is a need for uh, saviors to emerge on Mount Zion. That is how the kingdom can become the Lord's, the kingdom. Uh, otherwise, it will just end up everything devilish, everything demonic. Uh, people are struggling now. I know pastors that are struggling because they're, their children, their daughters are now uh, gay. Their sons are now gay uh, at home. It was not there, but it came from school. It came from the uh, marketplace. It came from the entertainment world and so forth. And um, because we had no influence there, we had no control there, and everybody else was in control except ourselves. So this is why you find even at a natural political level, there are those that are thinking of global influence, economic, political, military, cultural, and technological. 
In fact, this is very interesting because you find it about the USA, but last year, China was announcing the same thing, announcing a 15-year plan of global influence in economic, political, military, cultural, and technological affairs. Uh, and, uh, and everyone is, 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 is trying to wake up and come out of slumber and come out of sleep um, and, and, and so forth. So the church cannot be left sleeping. Africa cannot be left sleeping. And so we have got a role, we have got a mandate to make sure that in our lifetime, there is a marked and remarkable impact uh, and advancement that happens to the agenda of righteousness. But at the same time, there must be a remarkable pushback that happens to the agenda of wickedness. God richly bless you. Um, Apostle Tebe Baile, you, uh, you managed to connect much later, but uh, uh, closing is very easy for you because it is just standard. It is very generic. Um, you are welcome, sir. God bless you. I'm not sure whether he's still there or he has been kicked out again because he, apparently he was in a, a difficult connection area. Um, uh, Apostle Baile, are you there? Okay, he's not here. Um, we'll just wind up uh, immediately. Uh, any one or two statements, comments from anybody, and then we can uh, close in prayer. We have just put a comma. We are, we are carrying on a little bit uh, tomorrow evening, tomorrow, especially tomorrow evening. In the, in the, in the morning, we, we turn these things uh, deeply into prayer. Uh, in the evening, we have greater time for capacity building um, and exchanges and so forth. One or two people, if you are there, God bless you. You can unmute yourself. <laughs> 